Hello, and welcome back. I'm Sarah Miga, your go-to real estate expert and associate broker of Miga Homes with Keller Williams Ann Arbor. It's time for the next video in my latest series, Buying New Construction. Today, I'm gonna to be answering, when should I list my home on the market if I'm building new construction? As I'm sure you guessed by the title, this episode is meant for those that currently own a home and plan or need to sell it in order to close on their new build. One of the hardest and most nerve wracking questions to plan for is when to list your home for sale. And I have to start by saying that the pointers or techniques in this video are not a one size fits all equation. There will always be exceptions to the guidelines provided. However, the recommendations will work for about 80% of current homeowners. So I hope that you find this helpful. Now let's begin. The first thing you need to know when deciding the right time to list your property for sale is your new home's estimated completion date. When we first meet with the builder and begin the build process, the sales representative will give us a one to two month time frame for completion. We'll use this in the beginning to plan when we need to have everything ready and when to list the home for sale. Generally, I recommend listing your home on the market approximately four months prior to the closing date on your new home. The timeline breaks down as follows. 30 days on market before accepting an offer, then, 45 days to close, and 60 days of occupancy post-closing. This is about four and a half months total, which will, under this scenario, allow you to have some wiggle room if things don't go exactly according to plan. In addition, if something goes wrong with the sale, like your buyer walks away after inspection or becomes difficult and asks for a $25,000 price reduction, you won't find yourself in a position where you have to give in or risk losing your new home because you cannot close while you still own your current home. We wanna plan for all of the worst case scenarios. And if things go better than expected, that is great news. Now, someone might then ask, well, what happens if the builder says the home will be ready in September, but then something happens and they get delayed after we list the home for sale? If we find out before we accept an offer on the home, then we can use that information to adjust our plan for sale accordingly. We will let buyers know our timeline and hope that we can find a buyer who can accommodate. If not, then you will need to make a decision whether or not to proceed with selling the home. On the other hand, if we find out after you've officially accepted an offer, then you may find yourself needing a short-term storage and or a place to stay, either with a relative or in short-term housing. Now I know that this scenario is a little less than ideal, but the good news is it doesn't happen very often. However, if you had to choose between having a buyer at an acceptable price resulting in you needing short-term housing or getting a loan denial on your new home because it was a condition of your financing, you'd probably choose the first option. If you are not able to sell your home in the agreed upon timeframe and are unable to secure a mortgage, this might result in the builder potentially keeping your deposit, charging additional fees, and ultimately deciding to sell your home as a quick delivery option on the market. That is why for those that need to sell as a condition of closing, we wanna to plan to have enough time to do so and deal with any hiccups along the way. With that being said, if you decide you want to sell your current home, but it is not a condition of financing, then we have much more flexibility. We could list the home before or after you close on the new home without ramifications on the build side. It comes down to what you are comfortable with and able to afford. Another consideration I would like to point out is that if your home is in a market that is a bit slower, has a limited number of potential buyers because of affordability or its custom features, the recommendations for timeline may vary widely for those individuals. If you need to net a certain amount of money out of the home and it is unclear whether the market will produce it or if a third party appraiser will determine the value you need to be there based on a lack of comparable home sales, then we may need to decide together. The most important thing is to ensure the home sells at an acceptable price and may decide to list sooner, even if it means a double move. This has been the scenario with many of my sellers as I specialize in custom, high-end, and unique properties. But don't worry, I can handle it either way. I hope you found today's episode helpful and insightful in how to best proceed with selling your home when building a new construction property. If you have any other questions or scenarios that I did not cover in this video or anything else involving real estate, please reach out to me today as I would be happy to help and be a resource for you as I have for so many others. In addition, if you think you're within a year of making a move, we should set up a consultation today to start creating your custom moving plan. You can reach me at the information below. Plus, don't forget, 
I'm a part of a global real estate company. So if I'm not able to personally assist you, I can refer you to a similarly qualified agent anywhere in the world. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel today and tune in weekly to learn more about the process of buying and building a new construction home. Next week's episode will cover, can I write a contingent on sale offer when building new construction? Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.